Well, good day! So, yeah, yeah, I will still continue to talk about the DC Animated Universe from 1966 to 1970. And for this particular installment, it will be all about that fancy flying superhero named Hawkman! He can fly, he's got a pet bird, and he can shoot things out of his claws! And so, indeed, we shall go through this whole list of the usual things we do on this channel here for your amusement. And I guess I'll get the party started. So, alright, let's go. Yeah. So we start off in space, and there's this deadly destructive beam hitting our lovely little planet Earth from that jerk planet known as Pluto. So scientist Carter Hall and all his fancy science buddies are like, oh my god, like what the hell's going on? We gotta get to the bottom of this. So Carter Hall is all like, hey, it's all good, don't worry about it. I'll just put on a costume and fly away. And so he does. Along for the ride will be his sidekick bird named Screel. These two flying animals get on board their spaceship and just leave the planet. Which, you know, is actually a pretty good plan. You know, with self-preservation and all. <laughs> but their plan was to actually get in between Earth and this destructive beam. So it's a suicide mission. Ah, what a twist. <laughs> well, like it practically is, right? Because this ship is getting bombarded and it's basically at the melting point. When suddenly, this deadly destructive beam is just turned off. Boop. So I guess their plan uh, worked. So I guess this beam was bouncing back to Pluto. So the villainous interplanetary raider known as Cobra Ra and all his men on Pluto just, you know, turned the beam off. They gotta reconfigure some things to make it more deadly. Meanwhile, Hawkman and Skrill like fly to Pluto to get to the bottom of this whole thing. And they, uh, hmm, they fly to Pluto? Like it's no big thing? Like they get there within a standard Earth day like to pluto huh, that is some pretty spectacular ship but when they're on pluto man they get attacked by these deadly plutonians and instead of staying inside their spaceship you know that ship that can withstand this incredibly destructive beam you know and you know withstand all the cosmic radiation in space and all that hawkman and Skrill decide to get out of the ship and just take these alien spaceships you know like in like hand-to-hand -hand combat <laughs> But it works pretty good because they actually destroy the ships pretty uh, pretty quick and easy. They get inside of Cobra's base and just like have the easiest time beating the crap out of Cobra and his men and like the base. Hawkman has this crazy awesome kind of a claw, you know, kind of a weapon thing, a maru, which can be used as a claw to cut things up. Or it can shoot a destructive beam of its own, or it can shoot like this sticky acidic goo. You know, really, whatever you need. So this base that is capable of destroying another planet in a solar system, it just easily gets destroyed with like, without a second thought. Man, it's like the Plutonians put all of their eggs in this death ray basket and really had no other aspect of their armed forces like developed or armed in any way. <laughs> So yeah, like with all of that, the day is easily saved. The Plutonian base and its deadly beam of destruction is destroyed. Hawkman and Skrill take Cobra Rob back to Earth where he will, as Hawkman says, will face justice, which... You know, considering that he used the beam to destroy parts of the planet, I can only assume that face justice would mean face the electric chair. <laughs> but who knows? He might be spared, you know, for good behavior, I guess. But yeah, with the Earth and the day saved, that is the end of this same fantastic little tale. Yeah, man, Hawkman does stuff and saves a day, right? Pretty quick and easy. So it is another alien invasion in this cartoon series getting the Earth all softened up and destroyed a bit so they can invade later, but with a twist. I'm sure Hawkman was pretty tired about all these alien invasion episodes that he decided to actually turn the tables and invade the alien invaders. So instead of waiting for the fight to come to Earth, he's like, screw this noise, I'm gonna go to their planet and blow their planet up. How do you guys like that? Ha 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 ha, Hawkman. And that's how it's done, right? You just like neutralize that alien invasion threat until I guess the inevitable episode of the another alien invasion from different aliens invading for other reasons. <laughs> you know, like a pretty neat little episode. You know, there was really not that much conflict. Um, there was really not that much of a fight back against Hawkman and the day was won pretty quick and easy. So like this Cobra guy hanging out on the planet Pluto kind of reminded me about the old Flash Gordon serials, you know, with like Ming the Merciless. 
and how he lives on Mars and has all that kind of stuff going on there. Kind of a similar vibe, except Ming the Merciless was a bit more resourceful and a bit more dangerous, you know, than Cobra here. Not sure if that was really done on purpose or if the people writing the episode were actually just terrified of the planet Pluto. And if you do want to take a danger at this Hawkman episode and all his other two episodes, you know, yeah, might as well give it a shot. I do hope the other episodes are more complex than this one, though. <laughs> but there are other things to talk about, like all the behind the scenes stuff, you know, with the Hawkman, his history, uh, the planet Pluto and all those other things. So let's get to it uh, right now. Yeah, yeah. So to the very beginning we go. So Hawkman is one of those DC comic characters that started off in the Golden Age and was revived in the Silver Age comics. So the original Golden Age era, Hawkman was an archaeologist named Carter Hall who happened to be the reincarnation of an ancient Egyptian prince named Khufu. I don't think that specifically gave him any powers, but you know, it's pretty awesome backstory. So Carter Hall found some metal that can help him fly, he built a suit, and boom, became Hawkman, right? His first appearance was in Flash Comics number one in 1940. And just a really quick note, man, if we're talking ancient Egypt and superheroes, like, you gotta wonder how much Hawkman was influenced by the ancient Egyptian god named Horus, right? Man's body, Hawk's head, he was the god of war and hunting and considered protector of the land. That kind of fits the description of uh, Hawkman, but I uh, don't uh, really know for sure. Anywho. So, you know, for the inevitable Silver Age reincarnation of DC comic characters, like this Silver Age Hawkman is fairly different from the Golden Age, but still has a lot of similarities between the two. So, I guess for differences, first off, he is an alien from the planet Thanagar, where he was a police officer there, right? So he and his wife and fellow police officer eventually made it to Earth. They decided to stay on this fancy planet and fight crime here. And they also became curators of a museum in the fictional city named Midway City. So they kind of give a pretty good nod to the Golden Age character and really build a brand new story with the Silver Age character. So that's kind of cool to see. This Hawkman first appeared in The Brave and the Bold number 34 in 1961. And that is the character that is featured in this DC animated universe uh, series. Well, except for the fact that in the cartoon, he's a scientist and not a curator um, and some other differences. But yeah, it's still based on this guy here. <laughs> so like, even though his story changed from the Golden Age to Silver Age, his costume did not really change at all. If any at all. <laughs> but uh, he did get a pretty awesome makeover in the 1990s. And man, like this suit man looks actually really cool. Comics in the 90s, man. That was a pretty visually stunning kind of era of comics. And man, this guy looks absolutely hardcore. Love it. So as I mentioned about his wife, Shayra, she was also a crime fighter and she was known as Hawk Girl, eventually known as Hawk Woman. And she does not appear in this cartoon series. Like in the comics, they fought together like all the time, right? They were a crime fighting duo. Not so much superhero and sidekick, but like a married couple fighting crime. Like that's actually pretty different and pretty cool. <laughs> different slant on things, right? But in this cartoon series, she was replaced by a bird. Specifically, the Hawk named Named Screel, I guess because you know animal sidekicks are pretty cool. There were a lot of cartoons, you know, featuring animals in one form or another in the 60s, so I don't know if that had any influence on it, you know, which is pretty cool. And with Screel, I actually found him to be pretty funny in the series. Like, like he is pretty expressive with his human-like emotions, and I, I don't know why, man. That's just quite humorous to to me. Kind of reminds me of another bird from another crime fighting series. Hmm. Actually, Hawkman and Screel really do remind me of a another cartoon series of crime fighters, this time from Hanna-Barbera, which would be the duo of Birdman and his sidekick named Avenger. <laughs> no similarities there, right? A bird for a sidekick, Hawkman, Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> Both their series came out in 1967, so, like, that's a happy coincidence, but yeah. In the end, I guess, you know, Birdman did become one of the greatest lawyers of all time, so I guess that's a win for him. <laughs> and honestly, man, Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, one of the best series is ever made, I think, but I digress. So, the villainous jerks in this episode are from the planet Pluto. So this rock that's floating around the sun was discovered in 1930. 
So really, only 37 years before this episode debuted, which is pretty wild. And it wasn't until like the 1990s that we started to actually get some photos of this planet. Dwarf planet, protoplanet, whatever you want to call it. But man, nowadays we got some pretty stellar images of this place indeed, which is pretty astonishing. And like Pluto is like 5 billion kilometers away from Earth or, you know, 3 billion miles. On average, anyway, this thing does have an elliptical kind of a orbit, so the closest it does get is 4.4 billion kilometers, which is incredibly far, especially if you consider it took the Voyager probe like 12 years to get out to Pluto from Earth. So Hawkman's gotta have like some pretty fantastic ship to get from like here to there, like a look at his split, right? And I guess like if you consider it would take light four hours to get from Earth to Pluto, like that's still pretty far. So yeah, I guess if his plane goes like light speed, you know, that would make sense, but they never really made any mention of that in this series here, so you just have to assume and fill in the blanks yourself, I guess. And so, much like the superhero of the Atom, you know, Hawkman really wasn't popular enough to get his own TV show or movie, you know, outside of this little miniseries, but he has popped up quite a bit in other cartoons and other live action shows, so he is still, you know, quite relevant, you know, in pop culture, you know, somewhat, you know, not as popular as other mainstream kind of characters, but you know, he's still always kicking around, so it's pretty cool to see him. And who knows, maybe he will get one of his series or movies one of these days. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but uh, who knows, right? But in the meantime, he will be appearing in the Black Adam movie, which is set to come out uh, later this year, I do believe. And this will be his first appearance in the DCEU. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And um, yeah, I guess that's all I got to say, really. So other than that and all those uh, other things, I guess uh, uh, that's that. Right on, and there you go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video and if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed in this you know feel free to do so or anything else you know just to say hi that's cool too and other than that you know uh, have a great day thanks